Hey everybody, it's Miss Bell here from the Science Lab and in my video I'm going to be talking about taxonomy. Taxonomy is just taking living organisms and dividing them or classifying them into smaller groups based on similar characteristics. Um, those characteristics might be the structure of the cell or its functions, how does it gain nutrients, or even its relationships. How is it going to produce more offspring? So one question to think about when you're talking about cell structure is where are those DNA genes going to be found? Remember there are two types of cells. One is a prokaryote, also kind of known as a prokaryotic cell, and the other is a eukaryote or a eukaryotic cell. And that DNA is going to look different on the inside of both of those cells. So with our eukaryote cell, that DNA is going to be found in the nucleus just like right here. That is kind of the details of what that cell is all about. It's found in the nucleus. But on the opposite end, when you talk about a prokaryote cell, um, there is no nucleus, not at all. No nucleus because that DNA just kind of floats around like in my drawing right here. There's not some sort of um, area where that DNA is concentrated. It just kind of floats around. Another question to think about when you're talking about the cell structure is how many cells can be found in the body of that living organism. There are two ways to describe it. One is unicellular and the other is multicellular. So when you're talking about unicellular, there is only going to be one cell, one cell. And on the opposite end, the multicellular, there are going to be many, many, many cells. And that just depends on that living organism. Maybe there's five. Maybe there's five million. Maybe there's 500,000. It just depends on the makeup um, of that particular living organism. And when you talk about the function um, of a living organism, think about how it eats or how it obtains that nutrients. How is it going to gain nutrients and turn it into energy for it to survive and thrive in its environment. Um, there are two ways that living organisms can gain nutrients. One is if they are considered an autotroph, and another way is if they are considered a heterotroph. And an autotroph is going to create its own food. Think of plants. They're not going to eat anything. They get light energy from the sun, photosynthesis happens, and they take that sunlight and some magic kind of happens within that plant. We would also consider an autotroph to be a producer because they are producing their own food. They don't have to eat anything. On the other hand, when you talk about heterotrophs, they are going to eat other living organisms in order to gain that nutrients, to turn it into energy. And we would call a heterotroph also um, a consumer. They are consuming something and turning that type of food into energy. And when you talk about the, the relationships with living organisms, think about this question. How 
is that living organism going to produce its own offspring? There are two ways that living organisms can reproduce. One way is through asexual reproduction, and the other way is through sexual reproduction. Um, when you talk about asexual reproduction, that is just one parent making copies of its DNA, of its genes, and taking those, those, those copies and <laughs> passing them along to their offspring. It only takes one parent with asexual reproduction, but with sexual reproduction, you need two parents, two parents to come together and their genes are going to combine. They're going to combine and then those combined genes are then going to be passed along to their offspring. So I'm gonna show you what taxonomy looks like with shapes. And what I mean by that is I have a total of 15 shapes right here. They all look different, different colors, different sizes, different um, styles on how I drew them and I'm going to break down this entire group of 15 shapes um, category by category or characteristic by characteristic. Now the first way I divide my 15 shapes is whether or not they have some sort of corner. We know that all my round shapes are not going to have corners, but all of my triangles or squares or trapezoids are going to have some sort of corner. Then from there, I take my corner category and I divide it even further into two more groups. Some shapes that will have one or more 90 degree angle and some shapes that have no 90 degree angle. And then I um, break them into even smaller groups. This time, um, do my shapes have only four sides or do they have less than or more than four sides? And last but not least, I take my shapes and I divide them again. Do my shapes have stripes or no stripes? And this is how taxonomy works. It is taking living organisms and breaking them down into smaller groups. So if you think about how many living organisms there are on our planet, as far as scientists know, there are millions upon millions. Some that we can see with our vision and others that are so microscopic and small we can't see them unless we use a tool like maybe a microscope. And a way for scientists or biologists to classify all of these different living organisms is through taxonomy and different levels of taxonomy, kind of like how I showed you with my shapes. When you start talking about taxonomy and the, le the levels, the highest level is what we call domains. So a scientist is going to classify a living organism in one of these three domains. It's going to be considered either bacteria, archaea, or eukarya. And the next level, right underneath um, domains, is what we call kingdoms. Let me show you what those six major kingdoms are. They are considered eubacteria, some scientists just call it the bacteria kingdom. Um, archaea bacteria, which scientists sometimes call just the um, archaea kingdom. It's, uh, the next one is protista kingdom, which some scientists just shorten that word to the protist um, kingdom. Um, the next one would be the planty kingdom, which scientists sometimes call just the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, and the um, animalia kingdom, which some scientists just call the animal kingdom. And if you look at my two 
uh, signs right here, you're going to see that they are color coded. So in my bacteria domain, we are going to find the kingdom, the eubacteria kingdom. And then my orange with my ar um, archaea domain, we are going to find the archaea bacteria kingdom. But then you'll notice in my green writing, my eukarya domain, we're going to find four different kingdoms. We're going to find the protist kingdom, the plant kingdom, the fungi kingdom, and the animal kingdom. Okay, so let's take all six of these kingdoms and let's dig into what makes them parts of that kingdom. We have to determine whether they are going to be a eukaryote or prokaryote. Are they going to be unicellular or multicellular? Are they going to be heterotrophs or autotrophs? And are they going to reproduce sexually or asexually? Here we go. With our first kingdom, um, the eubacteria kingdom, they are going to be prokaryote, unicellular. There are examples of both heterotrophs and autotrophs, and they are going to reproduce asexually. With our second kingdom, the archaea bacteria kingdom, um, again, very similar to the eubacteria kingdom. They are going to be prokaryotic, unicellular. There are examples of both heterotrophs and autotrophs, and they reproduce asexually. Moving on to the third kingdom, the protista kingdom. This is um, an example of eukaryote. There are examples of both unicellular and multicellular. And also there are examples of both heterotrophs and autotrophs. It just depends on what kind of species that particular living organism is and they also reproduce asexually. With the plant kingdom, this is another example of a eukaryote. They are all going to be multicellular. They are all going to be autotrophs because they make their own food from sunlight, but there are examples of these plants that reproduce sexually and asexually. Again, it just depends on that specific species. For the fungi kingdom, these are examples of eukaryotes. Um, for the most part, they are going to be multicellular, but you know what? There are a few examples of unicellular, so kind of both but they are only examples of heterotrophs, how they gain that nutrients. And again, with fungi, um, depending on the species, they can um, reproduce sexually or asexually. And our last and final sixth kingdom, our animal kingdom, um, that is an example of a eukaryote, it is an example of a multicellular living organism. It's going to eat other things, plants or animals, so it is a heterotroph to gain that nutrients. And um, they, this kingdom reproduces sexually. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys in my video as far as taxonomy goes. Just remember, when you're taking living organisms, you can classify them into broad groups and then smaller groups and then smaller groups and smaller groups and smaller groups. And it really just depends on how you classify their structures, the cell structure, their functions, or their relationships. And the three main domains 
are going to be bacteria, archaea, and eukarya. And from those three domains, they split into kingdoms. Six kingdoms to be exact. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you learned at least one thing. And I'll see y'all later. Bye-bye.